wrapping our election week coverage with State of Play. Mark is here with us and we welcome Dick Pullman. He writes the National Interest blog at Newsworks.org. You also write for a few other places. Welcome to First. It's great to be here. Um, let's talk about the Pennsylvania and Delaware primaries this week. We wanted you here to kind of help us wrap everything up. What was your takeaway from the primaries? Well, one of the things I noticed was uh, the low turnout actually in both races really struck me. Uh, if you looked at the Delaware turnout uh, in the primary four years ago, Republican primary, and you compare it to last night, and the same with Pennsylvania, uh, they were lower in 2012 than they were in 2008, uh, which I found striking because 2008 was supposed to be a really bad Republican year with, with uh, the uh, Republican uh, voters kind of depressed by what was going on. And this is supposed to be the, the uh, the uh, promising year of defeat for the president. And yet, um, uh, Mitt Romney, and this was really striking to me, Mitt Romney in particular in Pennsylvania uh, drew 28% fewer votes than John McCain drew when he finished first four years ago. And it's, it's a very much an apples to apples comparison because they were both late primaries, late April, both meaningless in the sense that the nominations were essentially settled already. and. Uh, and, and Romney drew 460,000 votes, and McCain was about 590,000 votes. And, and in Delaware, um, Romney drew fewer votes finishing first than he drew in 2008 finishing second. Hmm. And what that just tells me, and what, I, what should be at least potential warning sign for the Republicans is, again, uh, does he generate enthusiasm among even th the base of his own party? Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's something that uh, is really going to have to be something they work on for the fall, particularly in Pennsylvania, which is considered uh, a swing state, you know, one of the dozen everybody is supposed to watch. Uh, but um, he's not going to, uh, Romney's not going to be able to compete in Pennsylvania um, unless he can really generate that kind of grassroots enthusiasm. Pennsylvania has not voted Republican in a presidential race since 1988. Mm -hmm. So he has, I think, a high bar to change that pattern. A lot of that, though, is do you think he's trying to appeal to Romney that is trying to appeal to too many in the Republican base so he's doing a lot of things but not doing any of them really well is mm. is that the problem mm -hmm. well that's that's partly his problem I think that's a good point I mean the, partly part of his challenge going forward now uh, is that um, the base of the party the conservative voters who were with Rick Santorum who I'm sure we'll talk about um, still don't entirely they're still not entirely comfortable with him and by the same token he does not want to be beholden to the base. He doesn't want to sort of chase them down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. uh, because uh, he needs now to, in the most overused word of this week, pivot uh, to a general electorate, the center of the, of the electorate, essentially, the swing voters, the independents, uh, women, uh, Latinos, uh, suburbanites who are necessar not necessarily tied to either party. He needs to be able to nail down the base and and, and uh, appeal to the middle at the same time. Now that's always the, uh, that's the gestalt for any successful candidate. But I think at this point, he has still a lot of work to do on both ends. Uh, Newt Gingrich has made several stops in Delaware. Um, we've met with him on WHO, has met with him a bunch of times. Um, and he's trying to appeal to that core in Delaware that likes seeing these candidates up close and personal. Right. Do you think we can expect some similar attention from Mitt Romney, assuming he's the well, candidate? let's just first we'll, we'll, let's just first uh, put uh, put Newt uh, in, in the proper perspective and where <laughs> he's going. He he really wanted to make a showing in Delaware uh, because I think he felt that uh, it's a closed uh, closed Republican primary. He thought maybe there would be a core conservative turnout for him, sort of a la Christine O'Donnell in the Senate race uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, and he only ended up with 27 percent of the vote. Uh, and I think that's basically that's the end of that's the end of the line for him. Uh, goodbye, Secret Service protection. That's great for the taxpayer, mm -hmm. um, uh, and he'll try to fight on and into the into uh, at the convention probably to get at least uh, a speaking slot. Maybe in, uh, maybe by uh, endorsing uh, Romney uh, speedily, he will be able to get a primetime speaking spot. Speaking slot. If he hangs out too long, he'll only be on in the afternoon. But mm -hmm. in terms of your question, uh, I don't foresee. Romney spending a lot of time in Delaware. I think this, this, this state is pretty solidly Democratic in presidential races. And uh, Joe Biden is on the ticket. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw a very interesting statistic someplace yesterday which said that uh, uh, no vice president uh, running for re-election uh, has ever lost his home state. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't see it 
happening here. I think that's just, uh, you know, it's just hard to imagine. And it's also hard to imagine uh, Biden being replaced, by the way. I mean, that's, that's a rumor that's, you know, been out there. It's one of those little parlor games that everybody plays. The idea of him and Hillary Clinton switching places mm -hmm. and Joe Biden going to the State Department, Hillary adding to the ticket. Um, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that would be, look like a sign of desperation from the White House if they did it. And it seems like uh, among women voters, uh, Barack Obama is doing just fine anyway. Let's uh, stay on the Newt topic, though, and, and talk about Rob Torno's cartoon about Newt's visits to Delaware. Um, we've seen it, and it's pretty funny. You have the guy in a Delaware T-shirt saying, gosh, I was wondering when he was going to leave. <laughs> Mark, you're laughing. Well, it's just it, he, he has been sort of peculiar, peculiarly making a lot of visits here. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make your last stand in a place that only has a handful of delegates anyway seems like seemed like an odd strategy to to put all your eggs in Delaware's basket mm -hmm. when the payoff wasn't going to be all that great anyway. Yeah. Right. Well, I think it kind of shows that, you know, how how few options he had left. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I joked on my blog, of course, that that uh, the Delaware primary should be renamed the uh, uh, Yo Newt, you know, read my lips, buzz off <laughs> yeah. primary. I mean, it was like the whole thing seems to be constructed to tell him to finally go away. And uh, apparently he's, he's finally taken that advice. I mean, it was a winner-take-all primary. He would have gotten all the delegates, mm -hmm. but it's only a handful. We also need to remember about, since we're talking about Newt, we need to remember what happened in Pennsylvania. Newt's childhood home was in Pennsylvania. He has some roots in the state. Uh, a few weeks ago, people were saying, uh, close to him, were saying, oh, he's going to do fairly well there, even in a losing cause. He ended up finishing fourth uh, behind Ron Paul also, as a matter of fact. So. Well, yeah, now the news is Newt's ending his campaign, expected to throw his support behind um, Mitt Romney. When do you think or can we expect an endorsement from Rick Santorum anytime soon behind Romney? Well, he and, um, he and Romney are scheduled, reportedly scheduled to meet on May 4th, mm -hmm. uh, which would be next Friday. And uh, I assume there's going to be a lot of things on the agenda uh, that uh, that they're not going to share with uh, the public in the next few days, uh, but it's pretty clear what that some of that's going to be. First of all, uh, Rick Santorum has uh, nearly one million dollars in campaign debts. Um, it's often I think this happened actually with Hillary Clinton and Obama in uh, 2008, where I believe the Obama campaign agreed to help pay off some uh, some of uh, uh, Hillary's campaign debts, and I have a feeling that might the kind of thing might happen now. But more importantly, it's the, it's really the conservative agenda that uh, uh, Santorum's conservative agenda, that, that he is going to really want to be able to voice some of that uh, as, I think, as a condition for being a surrogate for Romney. You know, maybe the idea would be, you know, where he would go to speak for Romney. But again, the trick is, um, does the conservative agenda that Santorum wants to speak for, does that align with Romney's perceived self-interest mm -hmm. in terms of reaching out to voters in the fall. And the best example I can think of is, uh, you know, Obamacare, which was a, you know, a very, very central uh, feature of, uh, of uh, Santorum's pitch. In fact, at one point he was saying that uh, on Obamacare, Romney was the worst candidate that the Republicans could field. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and he really wants to emphasize that he considers it a threat to freedom. That's almost a quote. Um, but Romney, very interestingly, in his speech on uh, Tuesday night uh, uh, in New Hampshire, after he sort of accepted the win of all five states, never mentioned Obamacare once uh, in, the, um, in his speech. And, and that was something that he's been stressing over and over again um, on the stump when he's had to talk to conservative audiences. Mm -hmm. So uh, because it, now I think he doesn't want to do it because it reminds voters of uh, the fact that he had health care reform in Massachusetts. So it's a very, very, it's very, very tricky. And in terms of the other stuff uh, that uh, uh, Santorum talks about, uh, which is, you know, a very sort of uh, outspoken um, opposition to abortion is the best example. Um, I don't think that's in Romney's best interest now if he wants to appeal mm -hmm. to the middle and appeal to women, which who, with whom he has a major deficit. Yeah, Mark, you uh, spoke with Tom Kovac um, for this week's show. Right. And let's assume that Delaware votes Democrat just like it has in the past several general elections. Does Tom Kovac still feel he's got enough momentum to beat 
freshman Congressman John Carney? He does, and he's really trying to position himself as sort of the new Mike Castle, uh, in a way. Uh, Delaware commonly splits its ticket uh, on a number of different candidates. They did for decades for Mike Castle. And mm -hmm. uh, Kovac thinks that he can be that guy that the Delaware Democrats will split their ticket for. He's done it in the special election when he ran for state house. Uh, and in the special election when he ran for uh, county council president, which he sits on now. And had it not been for uh, the Christine O'Donnell effect, if you will, in 2010, he believes he would have won another seat in the state house. Um, he was very close in a very democratic district, uh, but the top of the ticket he feels kind of pulled him down. So he is confident that, uh, that he'll be the, the ticket split uh, this time around and will kind of replace Castle uh, excuse John Carney. Right. And, and, and Dick, you said if anyone was going to try to upset the incumbent congressman, now is the time to do it. Yeah. Yes. Um, the time to beat a, an incumbent is when they're a freshman. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and in that sense, you know, this, is, this, is, this would be Carney's uh, greatest time of vulnerability. Um, we're lo and and, and retain keeping Carney, if we look at the big picture just for a second, keeping Carney is very, very important to the Democrats because they are trying they're trying to win back the House. And uh, John Boehner, the House Speaker, uh, gave uh, the Democrats the other day a, a one in three shot um, at winning back the House. You know, I think part of that is just to try to scare his own people to stay active and not be complacent. Uh, but there is a shot for the, uh, the Democrats. And so, you know, task one is to defend uh, your own vulnerable incumbents. Mm -hmm. And that is State of Play. We want to thank Dick Pullman for being here, Mark as well. Be sure to read his work on newsworks.org. It's called National Interest.